Hey, welcome to the Healthful Woman Podcast, the fastest growing podcast in women's health. Today's Monday, November 6th, 2023. Before I get to today's podcast, for the past several weeks, I've been speaking briefly at the beginning about what happened in Israel and what is going on in Israel. We have many listeners from there, and I want to be sure that you all know we are thinking about you, we are praying for your safety and for the safe return of all the hostages, and we are hoping you can swiftly put an end to Hamas and maybe be able to one day see peace or at least calm in your homes. This week, I also wanted to say something to all of our Jewish listeners across the United States and throughout the world. The anti-Jewish demonstrations and rhetoric and threats going on, particularly at college campuses, is evil and terrifying. This is not people disagreeing with policies in Israel. It's people targeting Jews and trying to make them feel unsafe real unsafe, not the nonsense unsafe that they usually talk about on campuses. It's meant to terrorize innocent people by fear and intimidation and potentially violence. If this were targeting another minority, I suspect the universities would end it immediately and the progressive masses would be marching, protesting, and stopping traffic on their behalf. But since it's Jews, it's what, okay? Shame on all of them for tolerating this. We all need to stand up against this evil, first, because it's right and it's good. Second, because if we do not end this, they're coming for you next. If you are not Jewish, please reach out to your Jewish friends and neighbors and send them some love and support. I promise you, they are hurting and afraid. If you are Jewish, stay strong, my friends. Never again. Okay, turning to our podcast today, I am so excited to have Jackie Ashri as my guest. Jackie, along with her sister Claudia, hosts The Morning Toast which is a terrific and unique podcast, and I think a lot of you already listened to it. Apropos of my intro about Israel and anti-Semitism, Jackie and Claudia are also proud to use their influence to raise awareness about these issues and also raise money for terrific causes. Awesome work, guys. Jackie is also now a children's book author with the recent release of her amazing book, The Camper and the Counselor. Today, Jackie and I are going to talk about her, her career, the new book, and what it's like being her. Next week, Jackie's going to come back and tell her birth story, which is a great one. One more important note, today is Jackie's birthday. So in addition to thanking Jackie for coming on the podcast, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. Okay, reminder for everyone listening on Apple or Spotify, it would be awesome if you could rate this podcast, preferably with five stars. Reminder to everyone, email us any questions you might have for our mailbag. You can either send us an email at hw at healthfulwoman.com, or you can also go to our website, www.healthfulwoman.com, and click on the link that says, send us your questions. Also, if you would like to pre-order the awesome book that Emily Oster and I wrote, The Unexpected, we have a link on our website. Please do take a look at that and order lots and lots of books. All right. Thanks for listening. Enjoy enjoy today's podcast with Jackie, and we'll see you back next week for Jackie's birth story. Welcome to today's episode of Healthful Woman, a podcast designed to explore topics in women's health at all stages of life. I'm your host, Dr. Nathan Fox, an OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist practicing in New York City. At Healthful Woman, I speak with leaders in the field to help you learn more about women's health, pregnancy, and wellness. Jackie, welcome to the podcast. This is awesome. This is awesome. Hi, Dr. Fox. I can't stop calling you that. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. I call you, I don't, I call you Jackie, so I guess you have to call me Nady. We'll get there. I know, but I'm just like, Dr. Fox. Yeah. <laughs> That's like calling your teacher by their first name. I can't do it. Yeah, I can hear you on that, but I'm not your teacher. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll get there. And more podcasting we do, like it's more familiar and I'll fine. I'll that's, switch over. That's fair. So this is a very exciting day for me. A, I love seeing you in general. B, I've wanted to have you on the podcast for a long time. C, I was on your toast situation, yes, which was amazing. And I've gotten so much feedback about that. So many people I know. I was saying I've never, my whole life, you know, I went to medical school, I trained, (laughs) I stay up at night, I deliver babies, I do this, I publish, blah, blah, blah. No one seems 
to give a damn until I'm on the toast. And then it's like, hey, ho, you're on the toast. So I've never impressed so many millennials at one time in my life, nor will I. And so thank you for that opportunity. You have an amazing audience. They're so cool. They're so cool. And I'm glad that they (laughs) were excited by it. But also the episode was so great. Like you really contributed so much and shared so much information. So it wasn't just like the toast. It was, I think, you know, the whole show in general, people really liked. Good. Well, I mean, many of them have jumped on the healthful woman train and their listeners and so that's cool we've gotten emails from them i saw my numbers bump up clearly after you know the toast episode and so it was really so thank you you're Uh, welcome but it was a lot of fun and this is my chance to now put you on the hot spot it's fun for me (laughs) the tables have turned my the tables have turned so for this podcast and i told you already when you got here i dropped the news that we're doing two so for this one we're talking about you this okay. is this is just Jackie. Okay. All Jackie all the time. And then for the next one, we'll talk about Jackie and Jackie's birth. And right. we'll do the birth story. So in terms of the first, and we're going to talk about everything about you, and we're going to get into, obviously, the book that you wrote that's awesome and is flying off the shelves, as you said. Like, literally, people are just waiting in line like concert tickets <laughs> to get this book. So awesome. And tell me. Who are you? My name is Jackie Ashray. I currently am podcast host, primarily influencer, and now children's book author, Uh mother, sister, daughter. I host the podcast, The Toast, which we call The Millennial Morning Show. It's a comedy podcast that we do every day. So that's kind of what sets us apart from other podcasts that are once a week. We Mm -hmm. do it five days a week, Monday through Friday. It's an hour long. I host it with my sister, Claudia, who is also an influencer. She's also a comedian. Mm -hmm. And we just have a good time. The show is about pop culture, but that's really just a framework for us to have structure for the show. And we go off on tangents, talk about ourselves, share about our personal lives, funny things that happen, like shows that we're watching whatever it is we'll talk about anything we've got a lot of time to fill it's great we've built a huge community we've been doing it for six years now wow and we love doing it people really love the show it it just keeps getting better especially as we enter different phases of our lives alongside our listeners you know people who have been with us six years ago are also becoming moms at the same time i'm becoming a mom so it's really cool to grow with them and like share our life experiences and just share what I'm feeling and know that there's people who feel the same way or in the same position. And then, you know, Claudia shares her personal stuff. So it's a very just warm place and we have a lot of fun with it. I mean, I think it's really funny. I'm always laughing on the show (laughs) and people just need that like to start their day. We're a big part of people's routines and we don't take that for granted. Do you have a sense of who your audience is? Yes. So we have a couple different like big chunks of audience. You know, we have a lot of Jewish listeners who live in the tri-state area. We have a lot of listeners across the country who have never met a Jew Mm -hmm. and hearing us talk about... You're their Jews. That's it. We're their Jews. Yeah. They like (laughs) didn't know much about the Jewish religion, faith. We'll talk about things and we explain if we're talking about being kosher or Mm -hmm. we're always talking weirdly this is a weird reference about like tropes when you're reading from the torah because that's how we talk trope not no no not jewish tropes but (laughs) not jewish tropes not like the horns trope no no (laughs) no but like when you sing something like with a specific melody and that's how we talk like we use phrases and we Uh sing it in different tropes and so we talk about like gematria just weird Mm -hmm. like things that (laughs) resonated with us from going to jewish day school things that we learned and we share that with our audience and and they learn a lot from it. So that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Where where did you guys grow up, if I may ask? So we grew up Although I know I may ask because you guys share everything right. on your podcast. It's it's pretty it's pretty detailed. It's pretty detailed. <laughs> we grew up on Long Island, but we moved to the city when Claudia was in middle school and I was in high school. So like half mm-hmm. and half, five towns uh-huh. and New York City. Okay. And how many of you are there? There's four of us and we're all girls. Wow. And like between my older sister and I, one year between me and Claudia two years between Claudia and Margot, three years. Right. And you guys are all Ramaz grads? Yes. How about that? See, that's our connection number one. I married into a Ramaz family. I myself am not of the elite Ramaz graduates, nor probably would I have been allowed into the school at any point in my childhood, but I married into them. So I really got some of that power and fame (laughs) through marriage. It's wonderful. Is that what Ramaz is? Yeah. The Harvard Harvard of preschools. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) 
And then, you know, my, my wife worked at Ramaz for whatever, 150 years uh, as a school psychologist. Was she was she your school psychologist? I don't think so. I feel like we've, yeah. we've compared timelines. Yeah, you're probably slightly too old for that. Ouch. Yeah, sorry. Or she's very too old for that. How about that? Well, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> sorry, I'm sure she's listening. Sorry about that, Mich. Okay, so you grew up in New York and then... Where'd you go off after that? You went to school of some sort? I did. I went to college. I went to Colgate University, uh-huh. which is in upstate New York. Right. Kind of a curveball. My, uh, I'm the second of the four of us. Mm-hmm. My older sister went to NYU. I went to Colgate. And then mm-hmm. my younger sisters wound up going to NYU also. So it's weird that I didn't. But, mm-hmm. you know, as it was happening, Olivia chose her school. I chose my school. And then right. Claudia and Margot just chose the same as Olivia. But it seems like I couldn't get in or something. Mm-hmm. But we debate about what's a better school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're not on the same list because one's liberal arts and one's university. So we can't actually get to brass tacks about which is a better school. But I went to Colgate, which is upstate New York. It's very small, remote, which is what I wanted. And I loved it. Then I moved back to the city when I graduated and I started working in corporate social media. So when I was in college, the word influencer was not a thing yet, but I was always like interested in social media. Like I just, you know, I like to talk and I think I'm funny and I just have like, you know, I'm, myself and so social media was always like a really good outlet for me like first it was twitter and then it was instagram and then snapchat and i've just always like brought myself to every platform as i am and i wanted that to translate into a corporate job like i want to do social media for corporate accounts not necessarily like making myself a social media star because that really wasn't a thing right so i held a few jobs when i lived in new york after college that were like social media management for big companies and after a few years of doing that, my sister Claudia and I, and Claudia is also, at, at that point, Claudia was also into social media. She was a really big influencer on Instagram. Okay. So she had a really big audience. I had like a, a mini, what are, they're, now they're called micro-influencers, which is a nice word for people with a small following. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, that would make me a micro micro no, you're totally micro, a micro influencer yeah well, <laughs> but in a good way like because your community is so niche okay to the fair. medical world also like you don't make your living about being an influencer so it's like God, it doesn't I, well i'd be broke so yeah right, so it, like doesn't matter <laughs> okay well i like <laughs> that's such a great term okay fine right, isn't that funny yeah so after a few years of like working in the corporate world claudia and i decided it's like a long backstory but we started a we wanted to start like a millennial morning show that would be like live streamed it would be like a social media show we're obsessed with the idea of morning shows mm-hmm. so you know why because of this movie that we love called morning glory with rachel mcadams and harrison ford okay i've never seen it it's and i've seen a lot of movies i'm it's a movie really guy good. all right i think you would like it okay what's your favorite morning show beforehand Oh, I don't even watch morning shows, Mm. by the way. I just love this movie. Okay. But I just, like, we love the energy, the idea of morning shows, like, the energy. And there's no millennial version of that. You know, they're all pretty much the same. So we're like, let's do... Right, they're usually geared towards, like, middle-aged, whatever, people who are at home in the mornings, I guess. I have no idea. And they're at, like, 6 a.m. Yeah. We're not up watching them. (laughs) So our thing was, like, to start at 10.30, and we streamed it live on Facebook, wherever you could go live. Instagram, you can go live. So it was just meant to be, like, digital Mm -hmm. and fun. And we did, like, a few shows, and people were really, our audience, existing audience, like, from being influencers. Right. And Claudia was, it's called Girl With No Job? Yes. What what was that? Do you know what the, the... sort of etymology of that is yes if you want to know it's a long story you gotta get her on but basically she was interning in the city and she was like having you know her experience that she wanted to share so she started an account called girl with a job where she would like have musings about what Mm. it was like to be an intern in the fashion world and then she either was fired or quit the job so then she became girl with no job Uh, and then once she was girl with no job and was posting different stuff, not about like the working world. And she was posting a lot of memes and like humorous content. She took off and she took off as I girl see. with no job. And that's when you two came together to start this. I mean, she already had the girl she with no job following. She already had the girl with no job following it. She probably had a million followers uh, by then. And wow. so we were like, and P- podcasting was like a very, it was happening. It was small. It wasn't like everyone you know has a podcast yet. There were like the big podcasting shows. Mm-hmm. We didn't listen to any podcasts. So when we started our show, it was not a podcast. It was a yeah. live stream on video, Facebook, Instagram mm-hmm. 
And after a few episodes of people were enjoying it, they were like, this would make a good podcast. Mm. And we already were recording audio into microphones. So we're like, okay, well, we can upload it like to SoundCloud. It's easy and free. And if that's how you guys want to listen to it, right. it's no skin off our backs. We want it to be everywhere people are. Sure. So sure, we'll upload it everywhere. And it really took off as a podcast. And over the years, we still do our video and it's important to us and our YouTube community is really strong. But over the years, we have perfected our art of podcasting Mm, okay so you're (laughs) when did you realize that this is a thing like we're doing this like this is this is going to be my my career this is going to be my daily thing as opposed to just like let's do this because it's cool so the way that it happened for us is interesting there's a lot of backstory but when we first started that show like the morning Mm -hmm. show for millennials we were working at a big media company and we started it within that media company Mm -hmm. so there was there wasn't pressure for it to be successful well yes to be successful but in the terms of like advertisers or the show making money because we were getting paid salaries from the media company and they just wanted like us to grow our audience but there weren't like revenue deliverables really yet Uh so we had sort of the freedom to figure it out without you know worrying about getting advertisers and all of that stuff so we did the show for about 10 months at this media company which everyone knows this story Mm -hmm. except for dr fox (laughs) (laughs) this isn't like tea yeah so we did it within the media company i remember we only recorded one ad one time because like a a brand had reached out it wasn't like we were adverse to ads it just wasn't like necessary that wasn't the goal of our show within the company they wanted Mm -hmm. to just like Uh, us to build an audience Mm -hmm. so then about like 10 months into doing that show we were utterly and thoroughly canceled (laughs) by all of the whole world fired you know out on our cancel like cancel culture canceled culture canceled oh you were hashtagged yeah you don't know that like i'm a cancel person no i I think (laughs) it's astounding how little i know yeah you could fill a semi with everything i don't know especially about this world so Assume I am like a grandparent. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, that's like, so that's what I'm doing. So we were canceled. We were fired. Our show was canceled. We're out on our ears. We're obviously devastated for a million reasons, but we also need to like get a job. Right. But you had all these followers. Like we you, weren't, all... you weren't canceled by your listeners. Some, some, some left, okay. but there were a lot of people who like knew, you know, that who we are and that mm-hmm. we're good people and that like we were so you know sorry and we're sticking by us so claudia and i i think we took like two weeks off to just like grieve basically okay. and then we were like okay well what are we going to do we're going to do our show on our own we're mm-hmm. going to bring it back you know we'll do a new name we'll find a new studio we will pay for everything mm-hmm. until we can start making money and i think we gave ourselves maybe six months to do it and if we weren't making a living, then yeah. we would go get jobs. That was kind right. of the thinking. Within, like, our first show back was really, you know, popular. Like, more listeners or viewers than even our last show of the old show. But also because people were interested, like, what are the girls going to do? Right. Like, haters were interested, too. It no, was, in a certain sense, getting canceled almost is, it's free press. Yeah, it was. Know? And it's not like we were getting a lot of press before we were canceled. All of a sudden, wall-to-wall coverage for us. Right, right. These girls who no one's ever heard about, and we were right. just, like, doing our little rinky-dink show. right. So we started the hashtag, the hashtag, the hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> Ashray's our over party. <laughs> we started our show. Well, maybe I should get, maybe I should say something really insane and get canceled. Yeah. You'll get so much press. <laughs> it does. I feel like getting canceled though these days, like doesn't hold the power that it once did, but then I'm also surprised when it does. And I'll see someone like did something or said something so long ago. It's like, yeah, it's not nice, but it's yeah. like not the worst thing. Right. I've, and it's like sponsors gone. Yeah. Brand. I'm like, we're still doing this. Like, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Like, so we started our show again. New name. We were renting studios from a media company. And this is when you're now the toast. Now we're the morning toast. The morning toast. Okay. Yes. And within a few weeks, we found a way to make it profitable through uh, subscribers. And then maybe a few months later, we started to get some advertisers because, like, if you have an audience, advertisers want to work with you so it wasn't always like smooth sailing and it started really slow but there was i remember a time probably when we started our subscription service where we had enough subscribers because we do have an audience so we had enough subscribers to earn a living Mm -hmm. and pretty quickly it was pretty comparable with what we were earning at our former jobs right and then we just kept building from there amazing do you have a sense of how many people listen every day Yes, that's a confidential number. I'll tell you offline. All right, but it's high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, as I said, everybody that I know who's under the age of whatever is like, 
yeah, I heard you on the toast. Like, and it's just like, I was like, oh my God. And I, I, I knew you were popular, but I didn't really, I didn't grasp it. And I, I'm curious, I mean, we, we met, and we'll talk about this in your, I guess your, your birth story episode. I mean, we met sort of just whatever. And I, someone said, yeah, you know, and I've heard of you or someone said I heard of you and okay, but you're a celebrity. You and your sister are celebrities, whatever the hell that means, you're them. And the question is, but you're, Obviously, you're just a regular, normal person, as you said. You grew up here. You got family. You got this. You got that. How do you grasp that? Like, how do you deal with the fact that you're you're still yourself? You've known yourself your whole life, and now you're not just Jackie the person. You're Jackie the celeb. Yeah. Well, because our growth was pretty slow, I would say compared to how other people kind of blow mm-hmm. up over, overnight. We never had a moment like that, like a viral moment where our audience doubled. Like every single day, like it grew very slowly but i think also healthfully because i think people who blow up overnight on tiktok like they really struggle with like one day being one person and then the next week like you can't go anywhere without people knowing who you are like that's a Mm -hmm. shock to the system Mm -hmm. for us it's been so gradual that we've had time to get used to it over the years Mm -hmm. and also the way that our quote unquote fame or like the way that people know us it's like Claudia and I sit in our studio and we talk to each other for an hour a day and we upload it but it's really just us talking and it's Mm -hmm. like all these people hear it but it's not like our studio audience got bigger and we would move to a bigger studio and there it's all so virtual that it's easy to forget that people are listening which I think also helps like our content because we don't get too hung up on what people are going to think but the nature of our work is just so digital that you don't see hordes of people, mm. you know? Yeah, I think that's fair. What what part of this life is fun? The cool part? Ooh, that's a great question. A lot of like good, you know, PR packages is what they're called. Like brands will send you like their new mm-hmm. product. When someone that you really like or admire listens to the show mm-hmm. and loves it. And mm-hmm. like, that's so cool. Like some, then you have like some influential friends. You get some good tea. That's always fun. But for me in this era of my life, my favorite, the coolest part about what we do is like how it allows me to be so flexible in my schedule and like be able to be a working, like full, full full-time working, full-time mom. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's something I don't take for granted. So maybe a few years ago, it was like, you know, dinners and or free meal here, like cool stuff like that, meeting celebrities and whatnot, going to events. But now it's like, wow, this is a dream that I get to work and do something that I love and that I'm passionate about. And it gets me up every day, putting on a face of makeup, like feeling like a human being, even though, you know, also a cow breastfeeding my son. (laughs) So I really, it gives me a lot of structure in my day and a lot of balance between like family life and and working life. It must be so amazing that you get to basically do this with your sister. Yeah. I couldn't do it with anyone else. I think that also is what grounds us is doing it together. You know each other's secrets. We know each other's (laughs) secrets. We know the other's not going anywhere. And we also like, it just feels like how it's always like growing up. Like it's not like things like change, you know, it's just me and Claudia sitting on the couch talking, which is what we would have done when we were eight years old. Yeah. I I was sort of thinking about it. And I think what's, what's kind of neat about the format and the way you do it is since you're, again, you're not there you're not a news media you're not entertainer like you're not like singing for people and putting on you know and I, I know you're an author now so that's separate yes. but you're just you're talking to each other about each other's lives and i think what's pretty cool is you have this this massive audience but it's almost like you're getting all these new friends like the yes. people who want to know what's going on in your life it's it, i mean it's a little bit you know what was the movie with jim carrey you know Truman Show. Yeah, it's, i mean it's a little like that yeah. but you know about it and you get to share with people and I assume you get a ton of feedback from them, right? Yeah, we do. And I always say like the toasters, the way I feel about the toasters, it's like wherever I would have lived in the country, like the people who are there who are toasters are the people that would have been my friends had I grown up in Kansas or Georgia. Like it's just people who, you know, don't know each other for because of like yeah. geographical re- reasons, but like we all have the same like neshema almost, yeah. and that's really cool. So whenever we've done events or Claudia went on tour, we did our camp toast, which was mm-hmm. like how the book got started. But then the crowd like realizes that about each other, and people have become lifelong friends mm-hmm. through the show and like through events that we've put on and through like communities. We've like have Facebook groups for our listeners, which has you know 
there's been a roller coaster with that. <laughs> but a lot of toasters like have like they'll they'll do a Facebook group for like toasters who live in Nashville, and then right. people will find roommates that way. And like you just know that that person that you're talking to, like you're probably going to get along because like if you like the toast, like, we're the same kind of person. Or, yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. Are there any parts of your celeb that's annoying i mean like do you like you know your paparazzi following no, you around and no, like nothing. try to get pictures of your kids and yeah you know i mean no. just things like that no like it really lets us be so normal that's pretty cool yeah that's really nice now when did you decide to write a book so i the story of the camper and the counselor is a story that's been like living in my head for five years because in 2018 we did an event for our listeners called camp toast mm -hmm. because claudia and i are always talking about camp how we love it and we've had a lot of listeners who have never been to camp they're like what are you guys always talking about like this camp <laughs> yeah jews go to camp right our parents send us away they don't want us in the summers no, now <laughs> that i talk about camp so much like on on different podcasts like i'm starting to realize like it's pros and cons like as a child, like a former child, I'm like, wait, they sent us away for a long time. As a current parent, I'm like, oh, wow, two weeks, two months off. Where are we going? Like, how are we live in? Where'd you go to camp? I went to Camp Vega in Maine uh -huh. for six summers. And then we went to Camp Pocono Trails mm -hmm. in the Poconos. Mm -hmm. And I was a camper there for two summers and a counselor for maybe five. Mm -hmm. And that was a fat camp, which is a whole other episode, <laughs> which is we could do a third episode about that. But anyways, <laughs> back to the story. So Claudia and I are always talking about camp. And then we were like, what if we put on a camp event for our listeners? We know our old camp, Pocono Trails. Mm -hmm. The grounds were rented from a place called Pocono Valley Resort. So it's mm -hmm. like, why can't we rent the grounds for a weekend? So we did. We put on two mm -hmm. Camp Toast events. But while we were at Camp Toast, my little sister, Margot, she came in one morning, like dressed full counselor style. Mm -hmm. And I. You don't call her Margo. What do you call her? Snitch. Snitch. All right. I thought it was Schnitzel, but I got. <laughs> That's good too. That's cute. I was like, why do they call her Schnitzel? Snitch. We okay. call her Snitch. Why? Did she tell on you once? No, it's oh. not about snitchery, which okay. is so confusing. It's just like a nickname that kept you know, Beautiful. Uh, uh, evolving until it landed on Snitch. And okay. Then that. I, I don't want to know where it started because it's got some rhyming words. Yeah, it's uh, oh no, not even that. No, you wouldn't even. I can't. I can't even like I talk about the origins of nicknames without I sounding like. No, that's how I, nicknames go. They they have nothing to do with one another. No rhyme yeah. or reason. Okay, fine. So she came into the bunk one morning at Camp Toast, and she was looked like such a counselor. Right. Now explain to me, Camp Toast, what what were you doing that you had you had toasters who came, came and toasters like slept came. in the bunks and everything yeah. and it was a three-day weekend tug of war and whatnot color war buy a ticket for the three-day weekend sleep in the bunk meet fellow toasters you could come with a friend you could come by yourself we had camp activities all weekend we also had like Holy a lot of crap. drinking that's unbelievable yeah i would have loved that it was so much fun i love camp I, we you don't <laughs> understand we're obsessed with camp we like our dream is to just everything we do, we try to find oh a way God. to make it so that we're I back really at camp. I really am a toaster. Yeah, you have toaster energy. I'm an old toaster. I'm like <laughs> a pumpernickel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a toaster. Is like there is no age. We had someone who came yeah. to camp toast. I was in her fifties, and she was the queen of camp. Oh my God, I love. camp. If we ever do it again, mm. you have to come. Oh my God, you understand how much I love camp. My family makes fun of me that like you would just go to camp now. I'm like, yeah, I'd go like a month. Yeah. I'd love it. Yeah. Oh my God mac and cheese and capture the flag and not showering for a week, whatever it is. That's me. There's seriously nothing I better. I shower every day. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, but not a camp. Yeah. So she came in looking like a counselor. Mm -hmm. So I started calling her counselor snitch all day and I never stopped ever for the last six years, five years. She's counselor snitch and I'm her camper. And that's like kind of like mm -hmm. how I'm always like, you know, I'll call her but like, counselor and counseling. Like I'm just like the camper. Mm -hmm. So for a few years, I just used to bother her with it all the time. And I also used to like make these little videos or animated videos, just like cosplaying, you know, mm -hmm. it's called live action role play, but that makes it sound like I'm mentally ill. Okay. And I would just like make her these cute videos, like where I'm the camper and she's the counselor. I always knew it would be such a great children's book. And that like, that would be how I want to like put it down on paper. It's not like I'm trying to make like an animated series right now. Like this is a story for a children's book about the camper and the counselor. Right. But I didn't feel like driven to write a children's book until I, uh, until I had children. Right. And when I was pregnant with my first son, Harry, Towards the end of my pregnancy, I was in like hyper quarantine because it was like Omnicron running rampant. And I was like nine months pregnant. So I just stayed home for like weeks on end mm -hmm. and I needed like creative outlets. So that was when I was like, you know what? Let me take a stab at writing The Camper and the Counselor. So that was when I wrote my first draft, like right before I had my son. I was in my ninth month of pregnancy. Then I gave birth. I didn't like really come back to it for like, maybe two months. But after, maybe after three months postpartum, I like went out and 
started to see how I could get it published. And that was... Did you have an illustrator at the time? No, I just had the story down mm-hmm. on paper. Okay. So I could tell you about the publishing journey, which is kind of boring. <laughs> but anyway, so that I wrote the first draft in February 2022, mm-hmm. and it is now October 2023, and the book is here. It's amazing. Now, did you always think you would want to write children's books or just because you had this story about Counselor Snitch that you're like, this will be a good book? I didn't always think that I wanted to. I didn't ever really think about it. And maybe it's something I would have done regardless because I just sort of, there's something about me that it's like, that's, I could write another children's book shoot not about Camper and Counselor and like, you know, pull another story. Like I just, I guess I'm a storyteller. I don't Mm -hmm. know. But uh, I also really like to write. So the idea of writing a book is not like the craziest. If you have told me that when I was younger, like, right. I would have believed you. Did you always know it was going to rhyme? Yes. Oh my God. Great question. That was so important. Because when I read it, the first thing I noted was like, this rhymes. When I started like, like selling, trying to sell the book, like I got a lot of feedback that like rhyming's no longer in it fashion quote. They said it's not in fashion anymore. And I was like, I respectfully disagree. I read children. Was this when they were canceling Dr. Seuss? Oh, they're always canceling Dr. Seuss. But that man cannot be canceled. His yeah. books are too fire. <laughs> they're, like, almost, the books are good. Oh, yeah. Roll Dahl also. He's like mm-hmm. a big anti-Semite. Like, I'm sorry, Matilda slaps. Yeah. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> so they were telling me, like, it's not really very cool to rhyme. And I just felt like, okay, that's, I disagree. I already had Harry at that point. So I was mm-hmm. like, I only read him rhyming books. I'm not interested in books that don't rhyme. It's not fun to read. Like, mm-hmm. you want the parents to have fun too. And the more the parent yeah. is into the book the more they animate it for their kids. So that in that sense, I'm really glad that I was already a mom when I Mm -hmm. wrote the book because maybe I wouldn't have stood firm on that if I didn't have the personal experience of being like, if it doesn't rhyme, I don't Mm -hmm. want it. Did you feel more confident doing it because you already knew that you had an audience? For sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because it's, I mean, otherwise, listen, it's, it's an investment of time, investment of money, and whatever it might be, but an, it's not as scary, I guess. Right. It's a nice a creative out, outlet yeah. to do something like that. But I felt really excited about sharing it with the world. And also, everyone else has known the story of the camper and the counselor since 2018. Cause it's something we would do on the show. Ah, okay. I always am calling her counselor snitch on Instagram. So for the audience, like it wasn't a leap that like that right. I had to know now, oh, who's counselor snitch? Like yeah. it was just the logical next That's step. That's so cool. And did you have any or i should say you obviously did but what level of participation did you have with the illustration with the animation or whatever you call it 100 percent participation so i found the animator on instagram Mm -hmm. i was looking like for animators on instagram because that's actually a really good place to find people but then you also have to find someone who doesn't have a current project that's going to take up their time so the girl that i wound up working with i pretty much like told her everything that was in my head i sent her pictures of me at camp right because you're, wa- you're the camper i'm the camper so right, like the clearly ca- the camper like was old pictures of me from summer camp like i sent her pictures of my summer camp and we really worked hand in hand that like everything would look like how i had it in my head it's amazing how has the response been so good so people just started getting their books like one two days ago and they're sending me pictures and videos of them with their kids reading the books and it literally brings me to tears like I'm also just emotional right now for a million reasons, Mm -hmm. but people are loving it. And what's so funny is like, I've been reading it to my son since I got my first copy in May and he loves it. Like every time we finish it more, it's the book that we've read most out of any other book. And it's not mommy, you know, being like, Hey, come read my book. Like he sees it on the counter. He's like counselor. And he knows it's a counselor book. So he's been addicted to it for a while. So I was like, I'm really excited and curious to see like other kids loving the book and if they love it the way that he does. And I've gotten so many messages of people being like, you know, I I had to read it three times. I had to read it until they fell asleep. Like my daughter, who's never brought anything to school before in her life, like is asking to bring this book to school because she doesn't want to put it down. You know, another girl sent me a picture of her daughter who's a redhead. She's probably like eight Mm -hmm. years old. She looks exactly like the camper. And she was like, she thinks the book is about her. I'm like, it is about her. Like it It literally made me cry so the reception has been amazing it's a children's book and so it's not you know it's not meant to be like the deepest thing on earth but it's it's first of all it's very sweet yes it's it's very real and there are some real themes in there i mean it's it's, it's real like it's you know it's about separation it's about you know leadership it's about mentoring it's about love it's about i mean it's really it's very very impressive Uh, you know i read it and I like that it rhymed. I'm I'm pro rhyme, just so you Thank know. You. I'm definitely on the rhyme team team rhyme. But it was really like, yeah, this is something like when you go to camp, 
it's the idea of sort of like leaving your home growing up attaching to somebody else like someone who's not a parent and learning from someone else and making good choices and all these things yeah. and it's really really good i mean honestly and i'm not blowing smoke up your butt i liked it thank you i wouldn't have talked about it if i didn't like it i would have just ignored it that's so funny <laughs> i yeah i think it's really heartwarming and i also think it's just like good and sweet and pure and i think yeah. a lot of stuff with kids that has all these like weird agendas and i yeah. just am not interested like let kids yeah. be kids yeah we don't have to put a subliminal message in here right other than you're going to camp for two months and other than <laughs> i don't know if you noticed it's like a little like anti-technology yeah I like that. Yeah. Camp is like, put, put away your phone. Put away your phone, like take a look at nature. Yeah, roll in the mud. Yeah, roll, exactly. So that, if, I, if there's an agenda there, that's it. But I think, like, oh, harmless. It's great. Listen, congratulations. I think it's amazing. I hope I hope you write more because it's really good. Thank and you. And I'm sure they'll be very successful in every way you can think about it. The, the last thing I want to talk about for this podcast, uh, and we were talking about this a little bit offline before, you have this big platform now. Right. You have your podcast, you have social media, you know, have a book, you have people who know you and listen to you. There's responsibility that comes with that, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And how do you think about that? Like, again, you you talk about light topics, right? And you right. try to keep it light and funny and entertain people. But at the same time, there's real things that happen in the world and there's real issues. You know, we're talking right. We're talking right now about Israel and what's going on, all the horrors. And you have all these people who come into tune to listen to you. Do you feel like on the one hand, I'm just here to entertain, like I'm going to stay in my lane and do my thing versus I've got to say something, I've got to do something. And how do you balance those two? Because it's a little both, obviously, but how do you balance that? It's a little of both. And it's definitely taken us years to find our sweet spot and and we have to be able to you know sleep at night right. and we do have a platform and we want to use it. And I feel like sometimes every and I I feel like it's important for us to realize that, like, first of all, every situation is different not mm -hmm. everything needs to be treated the same but claudia and i have the utmost important issue to us is israel right and since the beginning like you're not going to catch us not talking about or supporting israel because it is so unpopular mm -hmm. and we've caught so much hate for it over the years but like we don't care because again right. like we need to sleep at night and that's what's important to us right but then with other issues there's a, a range of things because then there are like you know political issues that like people want us to wade into and like we feel so certain that there should be spaces in entertainment that do not have politics in them. Right. For me as an entertainment consumer, I hate it when my show or whatever I'm watching is like muddied and becomes like divisive or polarizing because they bring politics into it. So it's as pop culture enthusiasts, like we hate to see it happen for other people. So we keep our show politics free all of the time, really mm -hmm. no ifs, ands, or buts, people would say like maybe Israel's a political issue, then that's our one if and and but right. because that's how important it right. is. Right. And listen, us. it's ultimately it's also it's your show. So right. you can do whatever you we want. We can make and, up yeah. any rules and they can yeah. contradict each other sometimes. Yeah. And people could choose not to listen. And I think that again, it, it's a decision. You some people want to weigh in on everything and, and there's pluses to that and there's minuses to that. And you can choose what topics you weigh in on and not. That's totally cool. I just curious how you you know yeah. how you sort so, of figure that out because it's tough. For us, politics off limits never yeah. gonna happen sometimes something will be so big and so noisy and it's like how can you ignore it and it's like so important to us that we do and we've definitely gotten like not that we ever didn't ignore it but it's easier to stand firm in that now because we know it's the right choice for our show and our listeners and that like we are one of the few spaces in pop culture where you're not gonna be preached to about that stuff yeah. you know yeah no i hear you i but think it's cool then also there are things that happen that are not like political issues that might be like humanitarian issues or just mm -hmm. like things like that and we we always try to acknowledge it but then we also know that our job is to bring light to people so like yeah. we want to be like a ray of light and it's like we know that this is happening we feel devastated today too like you right. know, it feels so silly sometimes to like, you know, there will be something horrible that happens, like a, a mass shooting. And like, we have to come on the show and talk about the Kardashians today. Like, right. but that, and we've been saying this word a lot on the show, like that buoys people. And, yeah. you know, and it's important to have just like pockets of joy or things that lift you up when you feel so down. And, and it's not to ignore it yeah. or pretend like it doesn't exist, but like you need to be able to see the light sometimes. So we take that job really seriously as well. And even when we feel like, depressed we just start the show and it's the power of the toast like even sometimes we're having a bad day personally like nothing mm -hmm. to do with what's going on in the world and we sit down for the toast and within a few minutes like you really are able to not forget but just compartmentalize for a second and like have a little bit of a laugh have some fun and like laughter is the best medicine and we're doctors like you prescribing laughter i love it yeah listen i 
I don't have the same kind of struggle because a I don't have as a big a platform. Which again, I'm a micro. What you say, a micro influencer, micro. <laughs> microaggression, no <laughs> micro yeah. influence. Yeah, and but also it, this is very this is a very narrow lane. Women's health and whatnot. But I feel like yeah. actually, do you ever feel that pressure? Because I feel like there are some issues in women's health that like get a little thorny. I I I've always maintained that I want everyone to feel welcome as a listener on the podcast. And probably the thorniest issue that comes up is abortion, right? Mm. And people have very, very strong feelings, as you probably know, about abortion in both directions. And regionally in this region, many people feel one way, usually in others, another way. And I try not to weigh in at all on this. And people want me to, and I get it, and I understand their perspective, but I would hate if someone listened and felt like they weren't welcome yeah. or that they weren't wanted because I'm really, the goal of this is not to preach. The goal of what I do is to give information in a way that's useful for people. So we will talk about abortion in a sense from like the medical side or someone might tell a story about it to give a personal perspective to it. In either direction, we've had people come on and talk about why they underwent an abortion, others why they wouldn't. Right. And we talk about sort of medically, but I'm not here to bring on people pro-life, pro life, pro-choice to argue about. It's just, it's not the space for that because I don't want to turn people off. And I get some flack for that and I get some flack both directions, right. but that's what I decided and that's how it is. But but that's nice. There yeah. are so many spaces for that. Yeah, sort of. and that's and, great. And I think people should be passionate. Listen, I, I, I live in Englewood and there's, there's basically an abortion center in Englewood. And every Sunday or Saturday morning when I jog <laughs> by it and there's people in front protesting and there's other people in front volunteering to like sort of escort women in so that they don't feel threatened let's say by the protest it's never been a violent protest but you know people and when i run by it and i'm with the rest i was like i think this is awesome i think that it's great that we live in a country where people can openly protest and openly support literally right next to each other it does not break out in violence it's not anything like that and i think that's fine i think people should be able to express their minds it's a complicated topic yeah. it's very very difficult to know what the right thing is it's the reason people argue is because it's difficult. Yeah. And I just think that I don't want to be the one to push people away. I really want people to feel welcome. And that's that's really the only topic that comes up, I would say, that's quite controversial. I mean, whatever, you know, home birth and this, but that's it's a medical controversy. It's not like people are like fighting in the streets over home birth. Yeah. You know? What about, I saw you did a few episodes about the COVID vaccine for pregnancy. You know, it wasn't really, it wasn't controversial because I was just giving the medical side of it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, and I was... You know, I said, this is what I think about it medically and this, and people make their own choices if they, you know, even people took it, didn't take it, like whatever. You know, I think yeah. I, I'm a, probably a libertarian by nature. I think people should make their own choices and be informed. And my job was to talk about the vaccine, what it does, what it doesn't do. What do we know about it? What do we not know about it? You know, I felt that there was evidence on safety and I would talk about that and that's it. You know, otherwise people do what they want, but it was, it's one of our most downloaded podcasts ever because wow. I think people were interested and you hear all this stuff and no one knows what's truth. And I try to be very, again, evidence-based, middle of the road, truthful, honest. This is what it is. Make your own judgments about it. Almost and I think people appreciate that. Almost the way that you would be like on an office visit. Yeah, with patients. It's the same way. I didn't, I'm not, it's not my job to twist people's arms. You know, again, I think there's some situations where as a doctor, it's my job to be more forceful. Like this is the right thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for a lot of things it's not like that there's a lot of uncertainty with the vaccine and so here's what i think of the benefits here's a possible risk and people make their own decisions and i'm i'm fine with that like i think that's great amazing jackie <laughs> awesome thank you for coming i'm having you on again obviously in like one minute <laughs> and we're gonna ha get to hear your birth birth story but i'm first i like i feel like i just met you in your career but i'm so proud of you i just think it's awesome what you're doing and i love it as I've told you before, like my whole family listens to you guys. I think it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Healthful Woman podcast. To learn more about our podcast, please visit our website at www.healthfulwoman.com. That's H-E-A-L-T-H-F-U-L-W-O-M-A-N.com. If you have any questions about this podcast or any other topic you would like us to address, please feel free to email us at hw at healthfulwoman.com. Have a great day. The information discussed in Healthful Woman is intended for educational uses only. It does not replace medical care from your physician. Healthful Woman is meant to expand your knowledge of women's health and does not replace ongoing care from your regular physician or gynecologist. We encourage you to speak with your doctor about specific diagnoses and treatment options for an effective treatment plan.